Okay, how's that? How's that? Is this sound? Hello, one, two, three. Hello, blue fox to red leader. One, two, three, four, five. Are you hearing? Hello? Okay. Okay, we're good. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay, as I was saying before I interrupted myself. Did, they, did, did you all see the opening where we did the production number? Oh, yeah, with the 15 dancers? Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy from Company B? Where the dancers go? Oh, oh wow. Oh, oh wow. Well. Let's see if we can get them back. No, okay, gosh. okay. Yeah. So as I started to say. What did you start to say? Okay, now? because it's the end of the month. Yeah. We're doing something special. Normally, we will give you a discount off a category, like skincare, hair care, cosmetics, supplements, etc., or sometimes off the entire site. And then, on other occasions, we will give you a free gift with a purchase, a minimum purchase, okay? Well, today, we're today? giving you both, <laughs> and I shall announce it in the next few minutes, okay? okay? But you're, right. you're going to like it. All this right. is a good opportunity tonight. Yeah. And can you hand me my book? Your book. I, I have been very busy today. So there you busy. go. And a lot of it has to do with this. You know, it's coming out of the paperback. So we are, I am still on book tour. And one of the things, you know, you've got to make lemonade out of lemons. And one of the great things about this uh, quarantine for me is, A, I do work from home, which I love. But it allows me, it allows me to have a wider reach. Say that four times. Wider reach. Wider reach. Wider reach. Say that five times I quickly. Wider reach. Wider reach. Wider reach. Wider reach. Wider reach. Wider reach. <laughs> say red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, <laughs> yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Well, uh, relative to uh, educating people about what's in this book, um, I usually have a, a, a defined uh, amount of time. It's two weeks on the road on a book tour and then another month or so doing interviews and things like that. I've been doing interviews for o over a year and um, now I'm in the paperback and the hardcover interviews haven't finished and I'm meeting the nicest, nicest people. I did this great podcast today with a guy named Darian. I thought it was Darlin. That's why I kept saying, hello, Darlin. I bet you've never heard that. It's, it's, it's Darian. Anyway, um, do you know the full name of his podcast? People should listen to his podcast. Uh, Darian, I think Darian o Olean. Let me check. Yeah. We'll post, we'll post it when it's up. Yeah, post oh, okay. it because uh, Denise it, 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 from my PR people, she said, oh, this is a... A but it was really, thing. it was really, it was really a very good interview. Yeah, you know what was great about it? It was great, A, because he was young and just handsome. And he wasn't reading questions. He wasn't reading questions. He actually had read my book. Yeah. How rare, how rare that you do an interview where the interviewer has, who knows who's going to interview you or sure, she, they have not read it. And I know when they haven't read it, right. they say, tell right. me a little bit about your book. Right. Even if they don't tell you that, you can always tell if they, exactly. if they really had, when they've said, yeah, I, uh, yeah I, did, I read your book. Or they say, well, you know, I, I scanned it. Yeah. That means that they, because when we send out a book to editors before we go on a promotional tour, mm -hmm. uh, we also send a one-page synopsis. Because, you know, the, the reality is they don't have time don't to read have. everything, okay? So we send the, the, the one-page synopsis, and then we send the entire book, and we hope they'll read the one-page synopsis, and then at some point, when they're on vacation and they have time, they'll pick up the book. What I'm finding with these uh, podcasts I'm doing, some are on Zoom, so it's um, uh, uh, video. Uh, a lot of them are audio. It doesn't matter to me what they are. Um, they... They work at a different rhythm. They're not doing the morning show every morning and having to turn out, you know. Who are you talking? Who are you talking about? I'm talking about podcast hosts oh, yeah. in general. Yeah. And um, this guy was chomping at the bit to ask me questions. He couldn't wait to get to the heart, and he couldn't wait to get to 
Senolytics. Oh, by the way, I, I was explaining to him about Senolytics and uh, how important they are, and I, I, he said, is this something that you sell? And I said, as a matter of fact, our supplement line does sell Senolytics, and it's such an important new anti-aging advancement. And with today's, well, I'm gonna tell you about today's offering, you could probably get a month's supply, or I don't know how we sell it, I should know more about that, and I don't. But um, I ex as I explained to him, I could tell he couldn't wait to get it. Let me just tell you what Senolytics does. Uh, it's a supplement you take, there are two supplements that you take once a week, uh, once a week. That's good news right there. And um, I live in this 100 year old, amazing, beautiful home. And but the pipes get all screwed up regularly. The, they get filled with gunk and then the oleander grows into it, the oleander grows in it and out of it like little shop of horrors and then you gotta have the rotor rooter guy come up and like clean out all the pipes and everything. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's worth it to keep the pipes clean and working at optimum. But Senolytics cleans out cellular debris. Now why do you care? The reason you would care, the reason I care, the reason I take it once a week and I give it to Alan, who takes whatever I hand to him. <laughs> he always goes, you could be killing me. I go, oh, yeah, but I won't. You know, if something happens yeah. to me, yeah. Yeah. Don't worry okay, about it, if something sort of suspicious. happens to me and it's suspicious, yeah. <laughs> uh, you see this person right here? Yeah, I would never, I would never hurt you. I know that. Ever, ever. I know, just check it in case there's one moment, you know, when you forget no to one, take your hormones no and you're like screaming on menopause and no, blah not, blah i'm a hormonally balanced woman i know now here's how uh, you know when i write a book like this book you can can they get this book today Karen? yep yep they can okay so this yeah okay right i actually when i hold up the book it's not so much about selling the book i want you to have the information i'm even when i'm writing the book i never think about the money I'll make or how many copies I'll sell. I, I just care about you getting the information. So with Senolytics, uh, what, what kept coming up from doctor interview after doctor interview is cellular health, which I certainly hadn't thought about going into this book. I didn't think about cellular health as an advancement. I didn't, I didn't think about it. That's what's so great for me about writing a book. I, I learn things that I don't know that I want to learn. And so, um, the, the Senolytics, the way it works is what I told you, that once a week and it cleans out cellular debris. But here's why that's important. No, but just a moment. What so, is cellular debris? I'm going to get to that right now. Here's okay. cell health. The definition of health, if, if your body and your body and my body, all of our bodies depend uh, on our age, I guess, we all are slightly different, but it, we are approximately 40 trillion cells, approximately, give or take. I actually have more than that. Okay, but go yeah. ahead. Go, oh, go on. Yeah. You, okay. like, you are like yeah. Mr. And um, the definition of health and you is having more healthy cells than malfunctioning cells. That over the years, as you go older, grow older, the healthy cells become degraded because of things like cellular debris, toxins coming in causing malfunctioning cells. Do you know what happens when toxins come in and attack a cell, a perfect cell? Um, it makes it collapse and malfunction. If you've got more malfunctioning than functioning cells, you're, you're not in good shape. You won't live a real long time and you're very likely to be set up for disease. So now we got all these dead guys down here and the healthy ones here, and as we get older, more and more of the malfunctioning cells become the norm rather than the healthy functioning cells. Is this making sense? And so what we're offering you with Senolytics, and then I'm gonna tell you about NAD, is that restores this to be a healthy functioning cell and so are these and now you've got the right balance and um, the cells are all cleaned out these cells now think they're young they think they're just reborn 
And, and then if you add in one more supplement, which, which I don't sell, uh, but the book tells you where to get it, called NAD, niticoninamide adenine dinucleotide. I know you're really impressed. Um, it is uh, responsible for repairing cellular DNA breaks. So now you've got one that's cleaning out the crap in your cells. Boom, get rid of that. So now these cells are happy, and, and that now the NAD comes in and make sure that it's repairing anything that got wrecked along the way when you had all the debris in there. How about that? Once a month, I don't know how much our Cenolytics is, but it's got to be around 30 bucks a month if it's that. It's, it's $34.99 there for she 12 goes. weeks. There she goes. For how many weeks? It's, a 12, it's 12 weeks and it's $34.99. Oh, 12 weeks, that's three months. Three so, months for 35 so bucks. Do that math for me. How much would that be per week? Oh, okay. So for 12 weeks, it's, it's uh, I don't know, three bucks, I guess, right? Yeah, three bucks a you week. You know what? For all that, it just, that I just explained to you that it does, think about that. Everybody's looking for the fountain of youth, and most women look for it on the outside. I look for you and for me to keep your insides young. If I keep your insides young, it will manifest on the outside. That's where with hair, skin, and nails, that incredible supplement we have. You keep youthful hair, you look younger. You keep uh, strong nails, you look younger. You keep your skin less wrinkled, you look younger. But also, your bones. And your bones, your bones yeah. stay strong, your mind stays sharp, and you get to have a sex drive. That's kind of a great thing. So, uh, Darlene, Barker Owl. I've never heard that name before. Barker Owl. Barker Owl. She said, every time I see them, they are drinking. They might not smoke, but they sure don't care to promote drinking. How can that be healthy? Darlene, well, I think it is healthy. May, okay. I, may I say something to Darlene? Okay. First of all, maybe it looks like we're drinking a lot. We drink with you twice a week, okay? Uh, after we leave you, we don't continue drinking. Well, I do. Secondly, Second, secondly, <laughs> what uh, I appreciate your concern, and I know your concern, but secondly, it's the time of the day when I get to be with all of you, I get to be with my husband, we're in an upbeat mood, um, we laugh, when we, when we do have a drink and you're not all present, do you know what we do besides laugh and talk to each other, we dance? Um, it adds to the quality of our life. So I appreciate your concern, but please do not be concerned. I'm a child of an alcoholic. I never had a hard liquor drink in my life until five years ago. I was drinking wine like everybody else and getting fat like everybody else, and then I put it together. Where's the fat coming from? Oh, all the sugar and the yeast and white wine that is the acceptable drink for women. I switched to tequila as a at the urging of my children <laughs> right. uh, because it's the hip happening drink. So if you drink tequila, your kids think you're pretty cool. But also, there's little to no sugar in clear tequila. So, Darlene, start watching on Wednesdays when we do cooking shows in the kitchen and there's no drinking um, involved there at all. Actually, most alcoholic drinks are downers. They depress you. Oh, because of the sugar? Tequila is an upper. It is an upper. Yeah. That's, that's one of the things I enjoy about it. It's, it, it is an upper. So... Um, there's actually one thing that everyone is agreeing about tonight. What? Everyone is talking about how beautiful you look. That's right. Oh, yeah? Oh, a lot everyone. of them. And yeah. then your son just walked in, and he, and he was being kind of loud, so I had to mute my phone, but he was like, needed chips and salsa and loud things. So I was muting and kind of sneering at him, and then he walked up to the monitor, and he pointed, and I was like, oh, what? He's like, she looks so pretty. Wow. Mom looks really pretty. Aww. That's, that's, my fa that's my favorite compliment from my family. So great. So great. I love it. Well, um, one of the things I like about, another thing I like about this show, if I'm going to a cocktail party, I'm going to dress for the cocktail party. And there's no place to wear our pretty clothes these days, so I look forward to Tuesdays and Fridays so that I can get all dolled up for all of you. And I urge you to do it too. You know, if, even if you're all by yourself, Put on something sparkly, it's fun. Pour yourself a tequila, have something salty, and uh, join in the party. I'm with you. Okay, you are.
You are. You're we so, love it. yeah. We but, love it. And um, you're also getting a lot of comments about that pretty bracelet. Tell us about this bracelet. You know, you all reacted when I wore this last week. This is costume jewelry by a designer named Tom Bin, B I N N. Oh, I used to date Tom Bin. Yeah, you did. This is Ally. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's semi expensive costume jewelry. That these are also. And he does over the top jewelry that I just love. And so these, it's my over the top bracelet and my over the top earrings. And I have some beautiful real stuff. I wear the fake stuff more than the real stuff. No offense, Alan. I, I, you're not offending me. Well, you stopped buying me real stuff. I jewelry. stopped buying you diamonds because. I don't want them. There are a number of reasons why. Would you like to know the reasons why? Uh, why? Well, first of all, actually, let me do this, okay? okay? Right. A little business, because okay. it really is special this week, okay? okay. All right. Here it is, 30% off site-wide. And in addition to that, in addition to 30% off, you get a free gift with any $25 purchase, and the gift is worth $40. Okay. Promo code CLEAN. 30. Does it have to be an uppercase, Caroline? Uh, it, no, it, we just always write it like that. Okay, clean 30. So, so, so for example, if you, were, if you bought Senolytic Renew, which I posted on the feed for those of you looking for the link, um, it's thirty four ninety nine. so if you were to take 30% off, that's going to be about $10 off, wow. which is going to leave you at wow. twenty four ninety nine, which would qualify you to get the free wow. body. What a deal. Wow. Yeah. $24.99. Wow. You can get the Senolytic Renew a 12 week supply mm. plus the free oh. body wash. Okay. So, you know, I didn't come down here to sell you Senolytics. I was just thinking about today's podcast. But Senolytics is one of these things that you will see the cumulative effect um, some months down the road. Just stay with it. it you, you know it's not very expensive. You can read about it in a new way to age. It's, a, it's at the back of the book to understand, once again, if my explanation wasn't good, you can understand, once again, what this can do for you, for your health, for your longevity, for your longevity. So, you know, if you, if you, if you work out the math, it's less than $2 a week for wow. Senolytics. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I really highly urge you to get it and... Um, take advantage of that amazing deal. Amazing. Wow, that's amazing. And if you can't afford it, and the book will tell you where to get it, order NAD from another site. That's not mine, but I am a huge supporter of this site. So go for it. I love bringing all of you this kind of information. Like this guy who was interviewing me today, and he said, you're so knowledgeable. And I said, first of all, understand one thing. I am not a doctor. I never ever give advice. I never, if you notice, I never use the word should, ever. I never use it with my husband, with my children, with my grandchildren. I don't use the word should. To me, the word should is Sister Mary Theophane. <laughs> There's always one, isn't there? One nun. One nun. Right. My sister, who is a raging Catholic, goes up to the priest in her church and said, she told me, he said, he's such a pussy. I said, oh, nice, <laughs> nice, Miss Catholic. She said, I went up to him and said, why aren't you ringing our bells? We can't go to church. Why aren't you ringing our bells? And ring them, ring them through all the masses that would have been, and ring them, and ring them, and ring them. And I thought, you know, they should. They should make a big rocket in town so that everybody goes. Are they actually bells, or is it electronic? It's electronic. All I do is press a button and turn it on. Yeah. And actually, I get it. And I said, you know what? I'd go back. I'd be that woman in the parish that's the one yelling about, uh, it's Maureen Gilmart yelling about the bells again. But that's how you get things happening. And throughout history, in times of crisis for all religions, when they took away the freedom of expression in, in religions, it was the heads of the church and the heads of the temple and the heads of the mosque that that had to go out there and lay, lay their lives on the line to um, grab back their, their, uh, their followers. So anyway, I hope my sister gets her bells ringing. I really do. Well, I don't know if I, 
told you this, but um, when I was in preschool, that was the only time I went to Catholic school. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I was in preschool, my brother Tony threw up on Sister Deodata. <laughs> How perfect. She had a stomach ache, and oh. she, he kept saying, Sister Deodata, I don't feel well. And she was like, Tony, go. To, but I really don't feel well. <laughs> and she threw up all over her abdomen. <laughs> uh, uh, serves her right. And Tony's the sweetest guy in the world. You know what? If Tony says I'm going to throw up, take care of Tony. Yeah, take she, care of Tony. She was actually a really nice mom. I don't remember. Um, I didn't like any of my nuns. I really didn't like Sister Mary Theophane. Really didn't like her. Who? What's yeah. her name? Sister Mary Theophane. See what? <laughs> Theophane. Who's that? Theophane. How do you spell that? T h e o p h a n e. I never See. thought of it that because that's what she said her name was, but it's a stupid name. And you call her Sister Theophane? No, the T h e. Oh, Theophane. Theophane. Yeah. And do you say, name. excuse me, Sister the- Theophane? Yeah. That's that what you say? say? Yeah. Really? Don't get it wrong. Yeah. Wow. And and one day um, in a grammar school we had an earthquake and we lived in in an area where nothing was code and the Catholic school was just like rotating back and forth and get out of the classroom, get out of the classroom, we're all walking down and I grabbed onto Sister Mary the- Theophane's arm and in Theophane. the middle of a, in the middle of an earthquake she goes, don't ever touch me, don't ever touch me. And I'm like, well darn six, I'm six and I'm scared, <laughs> I'm really scared. <laughs> And the other nun I didn't like, and I don't care if she's still alive, I know Sister Mary Theophane is not here because she was old then, is Sister Mary Jean. Oh, yeah. Sister Mary Jean. Oh, yeah. I wrote about her in my book. Sister Mary Jean had a mean gene. Oh, yeah. And um, I, I, oh, I was in love with Mike McQuaid. And Mike McQuaid could care less about me. But he doesn't like you talking about him. I know, but you know what? Yeah. Screw Michael Quaid. No, no, let's not do that. Oh, no, no. Yeah. And I never did. Okay. I never did. And by the way, you know why Mary, Sister Theophane <laughs> and Sister Jean are always together? Why? Because, <laughs> why because neither one of them want the other nun to get none. It was just something that occurred to me. You got that out? That, uh, and I thought, Caroline? no, yeah. well, you, the thing is, you never see two, you never see one nun alone. At least when no, I was growing up. No, you're supposed to ever be alone. Okay. God forbid. Okay, so that's to make sure that the other nun doesn't get none. Let me tell you about Sister Mary Jean. Okay. Well, just so, a moment. Tell the story about the time that you went on a picnic in a bus. Oh, and then I you... I told that after Sister Mary Jean. Okay, so yeah. Mary that's Jean right. Now. Yeah, and then. So Sister Mary Jean was the principal of our high school. Then the Pope is going to come down on this house, I okay? Know. Yeah. I know, but we'll ring the bells. <laughs> so Sister Mary Jean was the principal at Mercy High School. I'm sh- I know there are girls watching right now who went to Mercy High School. And so I was not who they wanted in their school. Uh, they're always measuring my skirt. You know how they measure your skirt in Catholic school? In they front, would love it right now. What? It's, they would love it right now because it's slipped all the way up to your hip. It is. I know. <laughs> I know. But what the heck? What the heck? When he got him, flaunt him. And, exactly. and when uh, Sister Mary Jean wanted to measure the length of your skirt, as you were walking in in the morning and you're at the top step in front of her office, which there's five steps to her office, hold it there, right there, the young lady, and she'd come up with a measuring a ruler, like a, the yardstick, and measure where your skirt hit you on your thigh. Yeah, but the moment you walk through, you, you raise your skirt, right? Well, I always rolled up my skirt. Yeah, but also, Al- yeah. Always. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And so anyway, so I, I um, would write a med- notes to imaginary boyfriends or or ones I wanted to be my boyfriends. That's what I did in school. I was bored in school. And I'm not blaming me, I'm blaming my teachers. If your student is bored, that's because you're a boring teacher. I teach, I teach all of you, 
uh, I don't think I bore you with what I teach you. you. You've got to find a way to create a visual and make your, your audience, whether it's this kind of audience or a classroom, be riveted by it. Well, I know. I never had a teacher who made me feel riveted by any, anything. I had I, lousy teachers. And by the way, you know that I can't hang a picture and I can't fix anything that yeah. breaks. And if it's it. mechanical or digital, I throw up my hands, I can't do it. But when I was going to university, I had a teacher who was so incredible, who taught engineering, okay, that I won a scholarship in engineering. How short were her skirts? It was a guy. Oh. The one with the short skirts, I won't mention her name, but she, she was in, she, she taught, I guess, English. And she would sit on her desk facing the, the students. Yeah. And she had killer legs, oh, and it, and she didn't she didn't need to wear a short skirt because oh. when she sat there with the with the legs, yeah. there was the legs, yeah. okay. And everybody, all the guys and in she was your what teacher French? No, she was English. English, English. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, your English is really good. Thank you. I well, I learned a lot from her. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I studied. Did you ever have an affair with her? No, never. Oh. I, I fantasized about yeah. it, okay? It was all on one side. But, you know, the thing is, at that time, I was, let's see, I would have been, like, uh, 18. Uh -huh. She wasn't much more than 25. I know, but it would have been wrong. So well, no, it wouldn't have been wrong. It would have been fine. It would have been fine. It would have been wrong She would have been my older woman. The cougar teacher, even at 25. Oh, no, it wouldn't be a cougar. Old. It would be me on her rather than her coming on to me. Yeah. She it, didn't come on all, to me. It all well, it feels kind of wrong from you because okay. you're my wife. Right. Can I finish my sister? Jane's oh, I'm story? sorry. Yeah. So anyway, um, one weekend, Sister Jean decided to go through everybody's locker. I have a feeling she only went through my locker because uh -oh. I wasn't ideal in there. Uh oh. I, I didn't look right. I I don't know what because I I was so innocent, so innocent. I, you know, all my mother could say about me when I she was first on Good Morning America, which terrified her, was, Suzanne was always very obedient. <laughs> and I was. I really tried hard. I was a good little girl. Uh, but I would write in class, because I was bored in class. It didn't matter what class it was. I would write love letters from imaginary and want, wanting wanted boyfriends to me. Like, so my big crush was Mike McQuaid. Oh, he's going to hate hearing his name you know, again. Get over it, Mike McQuaid. Yeah. This is the most attention you've had. Anyway. By the way, I'm sure if you went online and Googled that name, <laughs> you'd find 400 Mike McQuaids. Okay. Well, so it could be any one of them. He, but he's from San Bruno, California. That's the one. Well, he may not be there today. I know. I know. I know. So anyway, you know, the nice thing about getting older is you just don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's true. Well, that's it. So let me finish my Sister Jean story. Okay. So I come to school, and I think I'm having a good day, and I get called um, by my fourth period teacher. You know, this is, which is awful. Yeah, what? Um, Sister Jean would like to see you in her office. Okay. So I go to the office and I unroll my skirt so it's not so short and I come in and now I've got a de decent length skirt on and I walk in and there's my mom sitting there and I can tell my mom's been crying and I sit down and Sister Jean says, well, why don't we tell your mother what you've been doing? And I said, I don't, I don't know what I've been doing. Do you see where I got to be Chrissy Snow? <laughs> and um, uh, she said, I went through all your books, every book in your locker, and here's what I found. She had a stack of notes here, and so she started reading. Dear Mike, how I wish I was your wife. I long every day, just reading these corny things I'm writing, which is what you write when you're 15 years old. And my mother, the more she reads, the more my mother sits with her hands in her head. Crying and crying and crying and crying and crying. And the end of the meeting, Sister Jean said, and because of this, you are expelled. 
I have to tell you something. What? I had exactly the same experience. Okay, we'll tell yours in a minute. Let me just Okay. Finish. Okay. So, Not my with sister mom Jean. had gone to uh, work as a medical secretary to be able to afford to send her kids to these private schools. And on the way home, my mother is just not talking to me and she's so angry with me. And I'm sitting there thinking, what did I do that was so wrong? And um, I didn't do anything that was so wrong. But that, you know, here's the message of my life. Every negative is a gift horse. You have to look at every negative as an absolute opportunity. What was my opportunity? Okay, it was a little convoluted because I went to the private school, I mean the, the uh, public school, and um, they had an incredible fine arts department. And, um, you know, we had a nice fine arts department at Mercy High School, but it was all girls in stupid outfits. And I got the lead in HMS Pinafore. I don't know if any of you have ever seen HMS Pinafore. It's the most boring production anybody's ever written. It's a, it's that kind of music, oh God. And so. Uh, By the way, do you know that, uh, that famous cowboy who was a sheriff uh, in the Old West in Arizona? Um, uh, what was his name? Wyatt Earp. Oh yeah, Wyatt Earp. Okay. His wife, She's Jewish. she was a 16 year old girl uh -huh. in New York society. Mm -hmm. She ran away to San Francisco. She joined a traveling group called uh, of doing HMS Pinafore. Oh. Oh. She went to Arizona, wherever Wyatt Earp was. They fell in love. She became his wife oh. and they were married forever. It was a great love story. Well, Wyatt Earp is a cool guy. Yeah. Really cool guy. So anyway, um, I was expelled from Catholic school, but here's the, here's the positive, because there's always one buried in there. I got the lead in Guys and Dolls in my senior year, and that lead as Adelaide, which one day I'm going to play again. Uh, I can't do that to you, Al. I no. I won't make you go to Broadway. Well, so we honestly. can play it if, if we do it in, in California. No, in Vegas. In Vegas. You would do it in Vegas. I'd do it in I Vegas, yeah. I would do it yeah. to you in New York. No, no. And I could do it in New York in a minute. It's one phone call. No, no, I wouldn't do it in New York. No, I, I'd, I'd, I'd have to, to I'd have to get a girlfriend. No. 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 <laughs> no. no. I don't want to be that way. I've been that way. I know what it is. Um, so, out of, uh, out of that negativity came an opportunity, which was I... Um, was able to redefine where I wanted to take my life. Does that explain it? No. Yes. Okay. 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 Right. So I had a similar experience, okay? okay? Now, will you just pop up the sale? Yeah, let's talk. Okay, here we go. Right. Here it is. Okay, we're doing two things today that we've never done before together. It's 30% off the entire site, and in addition... We give you a free gift, which is worth 25 bucks, if you, and it's a $40 value if you buy anything, right? And the promo code is CLEAN30 on SuzanneSummers.com. How about that? Okay. Okay. So I was, going, I was going to Harvard Collegiate in Toronto. I was in grade nine. Harvard with, or Harvard? Harvard, H-A-R-B-O-R-D, Harvard okay. Collegiate. Okay. And I, I love cheese while you're talking. Pardon? Yeah, that's fine. Here you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in grade nine, which was first year of high school in Canada. Yeah. And I had a French teacher who was a real B-I-T-C-H, and I didn't like her at all. Yeah. And one day, I used to make trouble all the time in her class yeah. and probably some other classes. Yeah. And then one day, I'm at my locker, and I'm talking to my buddy next door to me, and I refer to this woman in very unflattering terms oh. and she sent me to the principal's office and yeah. there was my mother sitting there crying oh, you had that too. absolutely and oh. the principal said to my mother one day your son will be standing in a soup line mm. and for those of you who don't know what a soup line is it's when you have no money and you're hungry 
you stand in a soup line. And my mother took me home, and we, had, we didn't have a car in the family. What did you do to you, Al? Well, we walked home, and all the way home, she, <laughs> she was disciplining me. And every so often, i get one in the back of the head. And when we got home, and I know my mother loved me. I mean, I know wow. she loved me. Okay, right. O and a o and a when we got home, we had the ironing board in the kitchen. Oh. And she leaned me over the ironing board. She pulled my pants. Oh. Down. She took the cord mm -hmm. from the iron yeah. and she let me have it yeah. on my bare butt. Yeah. And you know what? You know what? I realized mm -hmm. that she was a little crazy that day. She was in menopause. Okay. Yeah. okay. But she also was... aggravated by little Sunny. That's true. Who was in her mind That's true. the most perfect child ever born. But she was. How could you keep screwing up, little perfect yeah, child? Because I was bored to death in school because yeah. I had lousy teachers. And then yeah. I, I went to a private high school mm -hmm. where I had seven kids in my class. And in Canada, high school is five years. I did all five years in two and a half years because I wasn't bored. Well, I don't know. Yeah, but... No, yeah. no, 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 You are. Um, you've been one of my greatest teachers. Do you know that? I do know that. Yeah. Yeah, but I, you've been one of my great teachers, too. I hope so. That's, like, part of a relationship. I don't punch anybody anymore because of you. You don't stop in the middle of the freeway giving someone to think or That's right. Or fight. I don't do that anymore at all. I thought, oh, my God. I feel like I'm not <laughs> going home. Okay. My dad never even did stuff like that. So Deborah, where is she? Deborah, yeah. Deborah Lynn wants to know, what do you mix your tequila with or do you drink it straight on the rocks? Yeah. We're straight. Casa Dragone, straight on the rocks. Yeah. Okay. And as I mentioned before, it's, it's expensive, okay? But if you get, they have several versions. They have a low end and a high end and a couple of oh. in between. Buy the low end. Yeah. Because their, their low end is comparable to most others' high end. Absolutely. We don't own it. We're not invested in it. No. No. We just like drinking no. it. Okay. Right. right. Um, I love the stories about um, you and your mother. And um, uh, gosh, families are so different today. Well, the, you know, the, the families, the people, I mean, I, when I look at families today and I see what's happening to kids today, yeah. and I'm not going to get into a, a no, you know, a dialogue no politics, about what's happening to the American family, but it's, I think it's uh, not good. I'll tell you, there are two families I can think of right now that, that epitomize optimal family, and that is Caroline's family. Caroline comes from a family of six of you, right? Yeah, six kids. Six kids. And Caroline's mother, uh, unfortunately, sadly, passed of breast cancer when Caroline was 13. And her father, Tony, who passed uh, within the last several months. And Tony was one of the great guys in the world who told the greatest jokes. He's got six children with no mother, and there's not one screwed up kid in this family. Each one of the kids in this family are as remarkable as Caroline. Each one- That's so nice. Well, I'm not even trying to be nice, but I thank you. I admire Tony Arminio and what he did, and also the way that you all took care of him in the last months of his life, the way you fed him every Saturday, it was called Saturdays with Tony, and Caroline would go down to his house and a couple of sisters would show up and she would make these amazing meals and he would sit there. There was like a TV tray in front of him in his recliner seat, that's what it looked like to me anyway. And when the food would come, the look on his face with his fork and knife was like, <sighs> you brought your mother back to life doing those meals, Caroline. You did that. Um, I know that it is true. He loved my food. That was really fun. Who wouldn't love your food? He and was just a great, great person to feed. And the other great family is my sister's family. My sister and her husband have four sons who each have had 
I, I don't know the numbers, but let's say they each had four sons. Anyway, the, the total, just from the kids she had, now, it now is 51 people. And growing. And growing. They're all having babies, and they're all like-minded. They all get along. During this pandemic, all they did was hang out together. My sister gave a, a 80th birthday party for, well, I think uh, her husband surprised her with it. And um, they only invited the four children and their offspring. And uh, it's the other great family. And great families are what made America. And when I look at your family, Caroline, and when I look at, and I look at our family, which I love our family, and I look at my sister's family, this is what it's about. This is what it's about. It's about um, kids feeling safe and kids mostly feel safe in a two-parent household. One of the difficult things in my life was raising Bruce as a single mother, um, trying to make him not feel that he's missing out on anything. And a lot of times I would send him, if I needed a babysitter, because I'm, I'm 20, 20 and 21 years old before I met Alan and I'm dating a little, but I'm not. You were dating? I was dating before you. Me with men? I hardly slept with any other men. I could count on one hand. And How many fingers on that hand? Not many. Not many. I was saving myself for you. I know. Maybe. Thank you. I was saving myself for you. You're right. You're right. I <laughs> but um, uh, family is so important, and today more important than ever. So, so that's the point of my story. Okay, so now I, I want you to talk about the body oh, wash. Okay. okay. Well, so they get 30% off today, uh, it, whatever you buy. You can buy Senalytics, you can buy, I don't think we don't have NAD yet. You can buy Senalytics, you can buy any of our supplements hair, skin, and nails, nasal renew, um, uh, Cup Cosmetics, Ubiquinol, Ubiquinol um, a probiotic, which is the dual encapsulation that uh, allows for your food to digest before it goes to your small intestines. I could talk to you for about an hour on that. And um, so we have so many great things on our website, be it supplements, be it uh, hair care, be it makeup, be, be it um, skin care. And we today are giving you a free gift of a body wash. We gave it to you two days ago also because you all loved it so much. And this body wash is, um, uh, certified toxic free. Uh, it's where you clean your most private parts of your body. Private parts. And it goes again. <laughs> uh, and uh, you get this free gift, uh, which is worth what? 30 25 bucks. 25 bucks. You get this free if you what? Buy four. If you, it's, it's worth no, it's, it's worth 40 bucks. Oh, yeah. It's, it's worth 40 it's bucks if you spent if you spent at least 24.99. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's 30% off the entire site, okay? But in addition to that, you get a free gift with any $25 purchase, and the gift is valued at $40. And the promo code is CLEAN30. It's a fabulous deal. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. And we're doing this because it's the end of the month, and uh, we have great, we have inventory and we want to share it with our customer base, okay? No. And also that, that body wash, it's really, it's a moisturizing body wash. So when you're in the middle of summer and your skin is dry, yeah. you keep thinking of, oh, I'm dried out from, you can't be dried out from using soap or body wash. Since yeah. Since it's so moisturizing, right. we wanted you to try it. Right. Oh. And also, we're here, we're normally not in the desert. We'll be in the, um, in Malibu as of tomorrow. We're normally not in the desert this time of the year, but as you know, we are remodeling our new house. I wish you could see, but I'm looking at our new house on that mountain over there. That's gonna be exciting. Everybody's saying, why would you leave this house? I've been, we've been here 43 years. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. 
This morning we woke up to the big horn sheep on the mountain outside our bedroom. Can you imagine what that's like? Well, especially now because it's mating season and the guys with the big horn are running after all these poor, oh, what do they call female sheep? I ewes? I, I, I think they call them ewes, I no don't they? I have no idea. And I think there was this. I don't think they might. What? No. I don't think they might. Yeah, whatever. Wasn't there a whatever song called There'll Never Be Another You? There'll never be another you. I wonder if they're referring to bighorn sheep. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, that's we why actually, we're here this summer. We actually watched one actually. Do it. How was it, Al? It lasted a second and a half. Yeah. And I thought, are you kidding? They, the guy chased that poor girl around for for hours. For hours. And, yeah. and finally, <laughs> and finally, she stopped, and it was like she stopped and turned around, and was like, "Okay, get it over with." And over we with. Watched, we went, it's gonna happen. That's right. I've got it on it video. Was, I've got it on boom. video. Yeah. Done. It was like boom. Gone. By okay. the way, Caroline, what you just said reminded me of high school. You've now been Alan Hamill. That's such an Alan Hamill thing to say. You high school? Way too long. High school. I hated high school. Um, oh, actually, I hated the private high school I went to. I hated when I went to Harvard Collegiate. Yeah. Because everyone there was smarter than me. No. I don't know if they were smarter. No, they, weren't. they weren't as you bored. Weren't, they weren't, weren't as bored as me. You weren't turned on. I wasn't turned on, yeah. So my sad story, one of my sad stories. And all the girls in that high school, there wasn't one girl there that I was interested in. They were all, well, never mind. <laughs> that means they weren't interested in you. That's true. They weren't. So when you have <laughs> they that weren't. tone in your voice, it's because No, no, they, they weren't interested in me. Yeah. So here's my sad story. So I go to the public school after I leave the Catholic school, being expelled for writing love notes to Mike McCoy, which he never <laughs> saw, and I get this great party, Guys and Dolls, and, um, but I had a teacher. Oh, uh, are you going to tell this story? Should I? No. Who? No, I wouldn't tell that I story. I not tell his name or anything. No, but don't tell this story. I won't tell this story. No. Already no. Already printed it. No, no, but you printed it, but I don't think you should tell it. It's too, icky. it's too icky. Well, it's icky. I just, no, I'm not. I'm going to tell a little bit of it because he was so sexually inappropriate. With me. Well, yeah, it's getting icky. I wouldn't tell. No, it's it. not because look how I turned out. I know, but still, that whole scene with it was really no, icky. There's no scene. These sick teachers and you know, pedof. Well, they I will say, Alan, sometimes when you talk about these things, it helps other people to have less shame about them. I know, but we're not. Yeah, but we're not. can zero in on the broken birds, and I was a broken bird having the alcoholic father and all that. Um, and, and, and it's like they can sniff it out. So um, I survived and didn't get abused by him, but he sure was inappropriate. And later on, years later, he was arrested for having sex with an underage student. Well, so that surprises me. I been the one. Well, he, he did abuse you. He just yeah. yeah. He just he didn't rape you, but he did abuse you. Yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, he's a pedophile through and through. He's such a pedophile, such a pedophile. Yeah. And uh, near the end of his life, I got a call from a girl that I know that was part of his uh, she, posse. Uh, great, uh, what, Gislaine Ma Maxwell is that her name? Yeah. It was like that. She would do business oh. for him. And she called and she said, he's really in bad shape and he's probably dying and he'd really like to talk to you. And I said, no way. Let him die his way, but I'm not going to like go in there and say, oh, uh, it was okay. So I had a moment. Yeah. Anyway. God bless America. God bless America. Anyway, that wasn't icky, Al. No, I thought you were going to tell the whole story. No, no. The whole story Did is icky. Taste this cheese? Divine. Really, I'll taste some. In the cheese world, one of the great pleasures of the cheese world is triple cream. Usually it comes under the uh, auspices of something called San Andre, ST, like Saint Andre, uh, Andrew, 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 
but it's called Sangre. And mm, that's it's good. triple cream. It's three full fat cream cheese blended into one. And when you put full fat cream cheese on a fig cracker, which you can find in Whole Foods, and then you put a spoonful of organic white truffle honey, and you put that out for guests when they come over, they will be very impressed. I'm just saying that. So, anyway, what's our deal today, Al? Oh. Because we're getting to the end. We are. Five minutes. Yeah. Okay. It's a double great day for deals. 30% off site wide. And plus, if you buy something for $24.99 or more, you get a free gift, which is worth 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. Promo code CLEAN30. Mm -hmm. It's a great deal. Great. You're not going to see this deal coming up anytime no. soon. So? I went to the chiropractor today, because you know, I'm still dealing with my fractured hip. I'm really liking going to the chiropractor. I've never, I've always been afraid of them, but I told him the one place I, I'm uncomfortable with is if you like my neck. I don't know, it just feels wrong to me, but he has a way he puts a towel over my neck and head and from above pulls and pulls and pulls. And he like lifts my cranium out of my neck socket and my shoulders and wow, does that feel good. So that was fun today, and I had an MRI today. That was my day, and then I did the podcast with that darling guy who wanted to know all about heart health. Okay. So I'm pretty happy, and how about you, Al? Well, uh, Teresa Chiapa, uh -huh. you should do a makeup tutorial. We'd like to see how you uh, do your eyes. They never run, share the secret. Oh, I'd love to do that. And okay. Caroline and I have done many makeup tutorials, but let's do another one, Caroline. Well, yeah, and you know, next week when you're in town, your granddaughters will be here. Oh. And um, oh, fun. so we wanted to see if there was one show that you wanted to do over here, so we can do a little, like, last dinner at I, this place before I, we go to our new I place. would do a, a dinner at your house every night. I'm trying to be respectful of your... No, we want you to come for what you're going for, but I, yeah, I'm going to... No, no, we, we, we want to have one outdoor dinner okay. before we go. All right, so. you choose the night. I, uh, I'm going to miss your house so much. I mean, you will, but, you know, home is where we are. Yeah, so true. when it's you true. see this new place, God. it's all like decks and views and city lights. And oh, great. You're going to, you know, it's like you guys. You're going you yeah. to go to that new place. Yeah, yeah. You think about the old one because it's cool. Yeah. So. You're, you've been very Al Hamilton. Home is where the family is. Home is where no, the family is. It's true. It, it really is. is. It is true. So, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry to say yeah. that um, my older woman. Me? No. Oh, when I was, that girlfriend who was like, what's she? When I was in my. Now? I, when, I, <laughs> when I was in my 20s. Yeah, fine. She, she was in her 40s. Yeah. We she? had a wonderful time together. Oh, we used to get together every Wednesday oh. evening for dinner. Oh. Did you sleep with her? What do you mean? Did you sleep with her? Did I sleep with her? Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think I was doing over there for she dinner? You said no. No, I never said that. Yes, you did. Not with her. No, you did. No, I said that with the French girl. Yes, and also the older woman. Oh. And, I, and I was in the back seat with her. Well, why would I have an old... No, you've never met the older woman. Oh, I have. No, you haven't. Oh, I have. No, you never met the older woman. I met woman. the older woman. Yeah. Where did you yeah, meet her? What's her, her name? I, I'm not going to say it out loud. Oh, no, in, when we were in Montreal, we met her. No, she's not in Montreal. You're talking about the older woman in Montreal, but she worked... <laughs> no, no, she worked for me, but I never had a relationship. Oh, okay. I never... Okay. That's what I, I was thinking. No, no, I never... She was oh, great. okay. This, okay. Uh, she was great. So she, you know what I, yeah, no, no. So I thought, no, no. Told me no, no. The woman in Montreal, okay. we had a great relationship. Oh, okay. She came, her, she and her husband were very wealthy, but she liked working. Mm -hmm. And so she would turn up every day wearing a mink coat, yeah. which I thought was cool. Yeah. And she was great. And she was really a nice woman. I'd like to see her again. She no, was great. What? We don't have to see her again. No, we don't have to see her again. Yeah. I had a mink coat when I was in my. 
went to Blue Buy, that main coat is a long time. In your 20s. In my 20s. Who I have given to my granddaughter, Camelia. Don't ever let her throw that away. Because it's... Oh, my God. Who would throw away a main coat? I know. But no, we know, we know someone. No, we know someone who yeah. actually gave away her mink coat, and her mink coat belonged to her mother, who was oh, a... God. We're not going to say in no, no, no names. Her mother was extremely famous. Because, no, it's not... I, I, I don't want to do that. It's not right. But she gave, away, she gave the mink coat away. And I thought... Oh, she, she was see, such see, a but, fabulous um, 40s and 50s movie star that she had a sable coat. That's when that was your... Yeah, sable was like... That meant I, yeah. I, I have so arrived. Yeah. Here's what's wrong with this bracelet that catches on everything. What? Um, no, it's a girl thing. Um, yeah, I forgot where. Okay. Where it's, <clears throat> anyway. Before we say goodbye... Yeah, it's almost that time. Right? Here's the deal. 30% off, site-wide, anything on the site, 30% off. Plus, you get a free gift with any $25 purchase that is worth $40. Okay. Promo code yeah. CLEAN30. Well, you guys blew it out. I just got a note from my sales team. It was a good last day. Okay. You, you had, it was a, a lot of people jumped in on that promo, so thank you. Great. It's a great, Enjoy. it's a well, great deal. Well... I love these shows, and we will see you again next. Is it is the next cocktail party Tuesday? No, next week. I, next week we're doing Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Okay. Well, I'm voting for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but I haven't been able to talk to you guys today. So. Okay. All right. So check. It could be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I prefer Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's well, yeah, because you're a suck Wednesday. up. Okay, you're no, sucking it up. Okay. No, it's not. It's easier for me. Why is it easier? You don't have any reason why it's easier, do you? No, you don't. Don't. You're making it up now. You are. I can tell. You're bullshitting. It's, you're making it up. Because I'm kind of liking the separation. Separation. I'm liking that it's not... Oh, well, separation. So yeah. we'll see who wins. Well, it's not Good about night, winning. I love you dearly. How about we do it Monday, Good Wednesday, night. Thursday, and Friday? Good night, Alan. Okay. Good night. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Thanks. Have a great weekend. We love you guys. Yeah. Thanks for putting up with me.